Hey Optimia, welcome back to Harmony Eclipsed. Let's continue where we left off. Um, that would be the one. Right, we were about to enter the old castle in the Everpree Forest. Yeah, this place looks kind of big. Can we go there? I don't think so. Oh. This seems uh, <laughs> Oh no. Um, this does not look right. right let's just uh, try to go with it. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, Hail was pretty good against uh, the, the Kragodiles. I hope not every battle is going to be like the uh, <laughs> the placeholder thingy, but um, we'll see. Oh, I see a chest. A tidal rapier. Is that a is that a rainbow dash thing? No. Is that a celestia thing? Nope. Who uses a rapier? No one, apparently. Um, Luna's weapon from long ago. Deals water damage. Right. I'm guessing we're gonna get Luna back in the party then. Well, there's Nightmare Moon. Hello, sister. I wonder when you would get here. I see you haven't come alone. Yeah, we're going to bring Luna back. Back, you naive little foal. Haven't you realized it yet? My appearance may have changed, but I am still Luna. I never left. I just had a little reminder about what drove me <laughs> to this all those years ago, and how nothing has changed. Sister, please, you don't realize what you're doing. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, Celestia. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking back what you stole from me. When I am done, no pony will ever betray me again. I have stolen nothing from you, Luna. I beg you, just tell me why you're doing this. Why you're really doing this. Oh, the music stopped. Unfortunately for us both, my desire is not something you are capable of returning. It is something that can only be taken by force. And I intend to do exactly that. Further talk is pointless. From this moment forth, the night will last forever. Well, I kind of saw that sentence coming. Oh no, it's still doing the placeholder thingy. Even in the boss battle. Ah, that's a shame. All right. I'm going to bet that Sunbeam would be pretty good against Luna. Um. I'm gonna try with a wind attack. And uh, quick. And. I don't really need to heal, so she can just do. Oh, what did I. I think I pressed the wrong one. There we go. She can just do a normal attack. Eternal Knight. Ooh. She does have like a pretty decent AoE attack. So I should probably also start healing with Flutter Shot. Uh, who needs healing the most? Probably Celestia. Oh, Thunder was really good. Even better than Sunbeam. Wake isn't doing too good. Um, what about fire? I wonder if 
did do really good. I wonder about hail. I'm gonna try a hail as Ingrid's song. Should heal Rainbow Dash first to a smash. I did not intend for that to rhyme, but here we are. No, Thunder is the way to go, and I was, oh, have a chance to sleep, and Thunder and a Remedy on I did not do too much to Celestia. I'm out of mana on Celestia though. Rainbow Dash should definitely keep doing Thunder. Which I should heal probably herself, to be honest. Smash is pretty good. I did not see what Celestia's basic attack would do damage. Um, I'm just gonna keep using Smash. I should still probably heal someone. Applejack has taken a fair bit of damage. So Celestia's basic attack does. That just... That does almost as much damage as her, uh... Sunbeam. If not more. I think. Maybe. Right, I'm gonna use a healing spell on Rainbow Dash. out of mana on Rainbow Dash. Um, do I heal? No, I think I actually just attack. Right, Celestia can attack. Rainbow Dash should Probably get a little bit of mana back. Applejack can keep using Smash, and Fluttershy can do a healing on. Hmm. Herself or Applejack? I'm gonna say herself because she's the lowest. Fluttershy? Isn't she wearing the item that actually makes her immune to sleep attack? Which came in pretty handy just there. Thunder, Smash, and... She is out of mana. I do want to heal Applejack. I'll use a cookie on her. Oh, there we go. Everyone gained a level, except for Applejack. Sister, is, is she going to be alright, princess? I believe so. I still do not understand how the corruption could have advanced as far as it did so quickly, but it seems to have sapped much of her strength. I am not certain we would have been able to stop her otherwise. Come, my little ponies, let us return to Cantilla so that my sister can rest in comfort. I think the My Little Ponies phrase is used a lot in this game by Luna and Celestia. Or maybe that's just me. Celestia? Sister, you're awake. 
Nice to see you back to your old self, princess. I gotta admit, even I was thrown for a loop by what happened. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried, worrying that you might never wake up. Never wake up? How long have I been asleep? A thousand years. Okay, not quite. Almost an entire day, sister. The evening will come in a couple of hours. Very well. I shall be ready to perform my duty when the time comes. Oh, no, you don't, princess. You aren't getting off that easy. What? We talked some with your sister while you were resting, and we all came to an agreement. Well, after you helped each of us, we all felt that talking about what happened and why we acted that way made us feel a lot better. Please, Luna, won't you let them return the favor and allow your sister to understand what drove you through all this all those years ago? I very well. It is not always easy for immortals to deal with their long lives, having to watch those around them age and die over and over, having bonds of friendship broken time after time. You may think it odd, but I am glad that not many stories exist from the time when my sister and I came to power. That era was full of tragedy and hardship, both for us and for the world, and I am glad that there is so little to remind me of it. There were many things on my mind back then. The war we had finished, the kingdom that had been lost, the suffering I had experienced at the hooves of the one we fought against. I could not face the world in that state, fearing further pain and loss. I withdrew into seclusion, and it was several years before Celestia could coax me into returning to daily life. That's when I met Morning Dew. I don't believe we've heard about this one. She praised my night like none had ever done before. She accompanied me in the long, lonely times of my duty. My feelings for her grew until they could no longer be called something as simple as friendship. She was my light, she banished my darkness. Or so I had thought. I like this picture. That's a very good picture. Because of my duties, I had very little knowledge of what Morning Dew did during the day. In reality, Morning Dew had no care for me or my night. To her, I was only a means to an end, and that end was Celestia. Like many others, she was dazzled by my sister's brilliance, and she saw a way she might claim that brilliance for herself. By seducing me, okay, well, that escalated quickly. She gained access to the palace and could pursue Celestia freely. Is this turning into a, a, a ship? Big thing. I do not know if my sister was simply oblivious to her advances or too polite to indulge them, but she remained unaware of Morning Dew's efforts to woo her. One evening, it became too much for her to bear. She raged and ranted, inventing her frustration at her failure to seduce my sister and using all the things I had shared with her to destroy me emotionally. Okay. Her words cut deep, and when she left, uh, the light <laughs> she had brought me left with her, leaving only despair and darkness. Even so, I could not find it in my heart to blame Celestia for this. She had always been more popular, but she still tried to go out of her way to include me in day-to-day -day ruling matters. She never chose to be more beloved than I was. But this pain I now felt, deeper than any I had ever experienced, was something I could not endure. Even if Celestia knew all of this, there would be nothing she could do to change our subject's feeling for her. feelings for her. I decided that the only way to prevent this pain from reoccurring was to stand as an equal to my sister to show our subjects that I was just as beautiful and powerful as she was. And perhaps deep down I foolishly believed that Morning Dew might come back if I did so. Thus it was that I became Nightmare Moon, cloaking myself in the dark spell and drawing upon the emotions that dwelt within me to power it. The spell granted me immense strength, though it tore me apart inside to turn it against my own family. I did not wish to harm my sister, only to show my own power in a way our subjects could not deny. But just when it was almost over, I did not see her until it was too late. I rushed to her side as she fell, trying to stem the blood from the wound I had inflicted. And as I did, I heard her final breath escape, her final word. Monster. When I heard that, something inside me broke. I turned all of my rage and pain against my sister, promising her that I would take away something as precious from her as she had taken from me. 
I swore that my knight would last forever and her son would never rise again. So blind it was I by my emotions that I failed to realize we were now in the chamber that housed the elements of harmony. As Celestia raised the elements in her magic and prepared to use them, the sight of our parents' final legacy somehow cut through all my anguish and pain. For a moment I thought of everything I was giving up by doing this. I was reminded of when we had used the elements against Discord, of how right it had felt, felt then and how wrong this felt now, and in that moment I felt a spark within me. Just one spark. With that, the elements fled to life, overwhelming the dark shell I had built around myself. The elements are powerful, but the spark that triggered them was tainted, and so their full power could not be drawn out. Even as they tried, they could do nothing about the darkness within me, and so I was banished to the moon. Though I was unconscious during those thousand years, the corruption was still free to grow and take hold within me. By the time I returned, I was consumed by it, if not for the pure friendship of Twilight and all of you, I may have been lost forever. Instead, you were able to draw out more power from the elements of harmony than my sister or I have ever had before. You broke through the darkness surrounding me, awakening my true self and forcing me to realize what I had become. Well, that was a mouthful. Sister, I never realized. Perhaps you're right, Luna. Back then I wouldn't have understood your plight. Plight. However, much has changed in the last thousand years. Many things have happened, so many things. But I swear to you, I will not allow our subjects to ignore you again. Um, I hate to interrupt this touching moment, but there's something I still don't get. Who is that pony we saw you with, and how did she manage to turn you into Nightmare Moon again? Well, that was the Dark Light Star, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yes, the pony you saw me talking to called herself Dark Light Star and claimed to be a servant of Sombra. I knew it, so Sombra is behind all of this. She claimed to have identical experiences at his hooves that I did, and that is why she appeared the way she did. She had an intimate knowledge of all the events I just related to you and used them with a dark spell to trigger that form. Don't worry, princess. Until she is gone for good, we'll never leave your side. She'll never be able to get to you like that again. Thank you, Rainbow Dash. However, oh, there is something else, something of utmost importance you all need to know. The one who approached me, who induced my corruption, who claimed to serve Sombra. I believe that her true identity is Twilight Sparkle. You, you're sure, princess? Her appearance and cutie mark may have changed, but her voice was the same and a few of Twilight's mannerisms still remained. Oh. Sister, are you alright? Yes, but every pony, would you please leave? I need some time to think. Sister, you have no reason to worry. We shall find her and... It's all my fault. Your fault? How could you possibly res be responsible for this? Because I set Twilight on this path when I taught her the dark spell before she left for the Crystal Empire. Until now, I believe that Sombra must have done something to them that was only now taking hold, but... This whole time, it had been my own students' dark magic corrupting them, not his. Tia, you know as well as I do that if you had not taught Twilight that spell, the Empire would surely have fallen. It was a risk you had to take, and though it did not turn out as well as you had hoped, the sacrifice meant that all of Equestria... No. Do not speak to me of sacrifice, Luna. Did you think you were the only one to have suffered during your thousand-year imprisonment? Do you have any idea what I have done to protect this land without the elements of harmony? Every time I found some pony who I no longer needed to be Princess Celestia, ruler of Prince ruler of Equestria around. Every time I allowed myself to care for and love such a one, I have always been forced to make a decision that took that pony away from me every single time. And now I almost lost you again too. I thought that I might have to banish into the moon again? To I it's just that I have lost so much already. 
My students, my friends, my family, all sacrifice for the sake of the greater good. How much more, Luna? How much more will I need to sacrifice? It's okay, sister. I understand. You're still going with them tomorrow, aren't you? Yes. Despite the risks and what have, has already happened. Yes. And there's nothing I can do to stop you. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that probably should have been no, but okay. Please, Lulu, will you stay with me tonight? Of course, Tia. Yeah. All right. Oh, we are, we are not done yet. Uh, <laughs> all right. Is every pony ready to leave? Just about. We should go meet up with Pinky next. She'll be at her family's old rock farm around. Wait. Sister? I am coming with you. Wait. Do we have five party members done? I know that this journey will be dangerous, and I know it is not right for me to risk my well-being. I should stay here in Cantalot and ensure my safety, so that the sun will be sure to rise each day. But, I would not be able to bear it if any pony cared about me were harmed during this journey, and I had done nothing to help them. For the sake of Equestria, for the sake of my little ponies, there we are again. And for the sake of my student, I will accompany you all on your mission. Very well, Celestia, I can see that there is nothing I can say to change your mind. Let us be on our way then. Come on, y'all. Pinky's family's old farm is southwest of here. If we hurry, we can still make the train. Be careful, Tia. You're not the only one unable to bear losing a loved one again. Just a Oh, right. We are five party members, but we can only have four active, I'm guessing. That makes sense. So Applejack, where do you think we should start looking for your friend? Pinky's old rock farm is a little ways east, so... Wait, rock farm? How can that be a farm for rocks? Rocks don't grow. I feel like we've done this joke a few times before at this point. <laughs> Not necessarily in this game, but just like in the fandom in general and in the show and in the comics. The field of petriculture is much too complex to explain at the moment, Rainbow Dash, but to suffice it to say, this area produces some of the finest metal ores in all of Equestria. Not many ponies engage in this practice due to how dull and tedious the task is, so it is not unusual for farms to exchange owners or even be abandoned for extended periods of time. Anyway, like I was saying... Excuse me, but did you hear say you were going to the old abandoned farm east of here? <laughs> yes, random pony. We, you did. Sigh. Yes, yes we are. You best be careful then. Rumor has it that some mean spirits been haunting that farm. All sort of weird accidents been happening around here lately. Several ponies have been injured already. We shall be careful. You guys thinking what I'm thinking? Well, I think it was getting weird, but I wouldn't call think she'd hurt some pony. When a corruption takes hold of a pony, there's no telling how they will change. We should prepare ourselves for anything. I have control again. Wow. Okay, so yeah. I think that's probably going to be this episode. Um what party members do I actually want? How do I choose? Um I can only see four. So oh I need to go to the crystal, that's right. Switch. Uh, I don't want to switch Luna, obviously, because she is um, one of my favorite characters. And I feel like Rainbow Dash 
deal so much damage that we probably shouldn't switch her out. And Fluttershy is our healer, which is nice. So the only other option is Applejack. Sorry, Applejack. Oh man, it really is gonna be the background pony all over again, isn't it? Poor Applejack. I mean, it was going to be either Applejack or Fluttershy, because I don't want to part with Luna, and I don't want to get rid of Rainbow Dash, because she deals so much damage. And she has an area attack spell, which is huge for, like, the groups of three and four and more. Um, so yeah. I mean, I could consider swapping Fluttershy with Applejack, but let me know what you think. Um... If I don't hear anything, I'll just continue as it is. I think that's it for now, and I'm sorry I didn't get to like actually play that much, but that's sometimes how an RPG is. It is sometimes very story heavy. So sometimes it's just me reading from a script pretty much for an episode like this one. Uh, we did defeat Nightmare Moon and get Luna back, so I'm pretty happy with that. Thank you for watching though, and I'll see you in the next one. It's been out.